Hello and welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. Hope everyone is doing well. Today we are going to be talking about Vicky Don Jackson. If I pronounce anything wrong, I do apologize. Born Vicky Don Carson on February 13th, 1966 in Montauk County, Texas. Little is publicly known about Jackson's early life. A licensed vocational nurse since 1989 who worked at several other hospitals and a nursing home around North Texas. She eventually found employment at the Nakona General Hospital sometime during late 2000. The hospital is known for treating predominantly elderly patients with slight ailments and was considered among the nation's 100 best facilities despite its modest nature. Between December 2000 and February 2001, Nakona General Hospital recorded an unusually large surge of patient deaths, all of whom were between the ages of 62 and 100 and had previously been in healthy condition. While this was initially prescribed to the patient's advanced age and weaker immune system, rumors spread around the facility that perhaps somebody had purposefully began killing them. This eventually led the hospital's administrator, Charles E. Norris, to contact a pharmacist about a discrepancy he had taken note of. During this period, vials of myovacron had been going missing, which was initially ascribed to inventory mismanagement as it was not considered a lethal substance. After consulting with the pharmacist and tracing that all of the deaths occurred during one particular shift, Norris ordered that the cabinets with Myvacron be locked up and accessed only by the supervisors, and the police should be immediately notified. Subsequently, a joint investigation by the local police, the Texas Rangers, and the FBI was launched to investigate the deaths of more than 20 patients who may have been poisoned with Myvacron. While exhumations from cemeteries in North Texas and Oklahoma were underway, newspapers revealed that a civil lawsuit had been filed on behalf of the polio patient 61-year-old Donnelly Reed, who claimed that one of the nurses, Vicky Don Jackson, who had since been fired, had injected a drug into his IV tube. While Reed survived the ordeal, thanks to another nurse who came to his aid, he would die two months later from pneumonia. A week after that, another lawsuit was filed by the children of 87-year-old Boyd Bruce Burnett, alleging that Jackson had injected him with an unprescribed drug that later resulted in his death on December 24, 2000. After being fired from the hospital, Jackson found herself a new job at a local grocery store, where she was arrested on July 16, 2002 on charges of four capital murders. She was remanded to a wait trial on a 2 million bond. While the authorities continued to exhume and examine bodies for any further potential victims, her trial was scheduled for October 2004, and a gag order was issued on the case, preventing lawyers from revealing the specifics aside from the fact that prosecutors would not seek the death penalty. In January 2004, Jackson was charged with an additional six murders and her bond raised from two million to six million. Jackson's first trial would eventually result in a mistrial as the judge determined that comments made by prosecutor Ralph Guerrero had prejudiced jurors towards the defendant. As a result, the venue for the upcoming trial was moved to San Angelo and the new jury would be selected. Guerrero had told the jurors that investigators had located vials of Myra Cron at Jackson's home and suggested that her failing marriages and losing custody of her children might have been contributing factors for her decision to start killing her patients. After her second trial, FBI Special Agent David Burns testified against Jackson, revealing that in the course of several interrogations with her, he determined that she had killed the patients in fits for anger for being too demanding and that she had attempted to injure several others, including a 14-year-old girl and a 40-year-old woman suffering from Crohn's disease. When pressed as to why she felt the need to kill them, she simply replied that she did not know. In the end, Jackson pleaded no contest to the 10 capital murder charges, accepting the life imprisonment terms in exchange for avoiding a jury trial and having her daughter testifying against her. Following her conviction, she released a statement via her attorney proclaiming her innocence and expressing her sympathy for the families of the victims, which was met with lukewarm reception. 
She and the defense team attended an evidentiary hearing in 2015, seeking a new trial and a dismissal of Wright, but no results have been reported of that endeavor. As of August 2021, she remains incarcerated at the Christina Melton Crane Unit in Gatesville, with her earliest possible parole date being in 2042. Thank you for listening. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing and liking my channel, and I will see you on the next one.